Hi and welcome to this month's editorial video covering the scalability of a hotel tech stack designed to best support agnostic and flexible systems. Joining us in this video is Mark Fancourt from Travhotech and Konstantin Vasiliev from Scient. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out Mark's article on this topic. He's written a great piece on it. So what should a modern hotel's tech stack look like and how should hotels prepare to procure for the supporting business technology that will offer them future flexibility and scalability of systems? It's a tough question and one that if approached poorly could lead to many future problems not just technical but also financial. Think about all the different operational requirements that need technology to support them today in a modern hotel. Distribution, hotels websites and third party, front office, upselling, guest reviews, CRM, housekeeping, maintenance, food and beverage, back office, guest facing technology, recreational for spa and golf resorts. All the technology that support these different functions also themselves need to ideally be cloud-based solutions, simply offering more flexibility with access from anywhere that help reduce costs as well as increase security. Make sure that you check out our editorial from Data Sovereignty for more information on the security piece. Many of us today accept that easier and cheaper integrations are definitely the way to go. Integrations are that important. So the ability to connect solutions into the tech stack easily supports future updates as well as system upgrades. Scalable technology offers more flexibility and value for money, especially if hotel owners or groups have future growth plans. Scalability offers hotels the ability to start with basic solution packages and upgrade as they grow and as is needed. Automation encourages time and cost saving. Therefore, it is important to identify specific areas of hotel operations and workflow that could be automated. Again, see our June's editorial where we dived into the topic of automation. Again, this is a bit of a no-brainer given that all the technology that guests and staff use outside of hospitality are pretty much 100% available on mobile, all offering seamless experiences. So mobile support really should be high in the list of priorities when reviewing potential new technology options, regardless of what department that technology is to support. Many folks probably wonder how and where they can start when it comes to their on-property technology. It can be a daunting thought for many who really see themselves as hosts and focusing on the guest experience. Thing is, in today's world, technology plays a critical part of the guest experience and their ability to be the hosts they ideally strive to be. So it makes sense to face the elephant in the room and get stuck into it. Kind of like ripping off that band-aid. Let's go to Mark Fancourt now for his thoughts. You know, I think I think as anyone moves into a new technology environment, that they're coming from some existing tools that they've already got, and, and the challenge becomes um, what's going first and what's being replaced, and that's not always the same decision for everyone. But you know, for most, for most, you know, what what's the most common thing to our industry? Well, it's 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 guest rooms, right? So, so the property management system, however you want to term that always, you know, always um, maintains a central role and, and, it's, and it's a good place to start, albeit that making a change to your property management system, you know, has quite a significant impact on the rest of your business because it's so connected to the rest of your business. However, um, if you are going to, to make the change, then it is a good place to start and at some point, yeah, you know, anyone who who wants to take this sort of journey is going to have to take the big bite, and that that is the big bite, you know, as as we know it in our industry because it is a very central piece of technology. Um, so yeah, that's the way I tend to look at it, and and because it's it's the system that um, most you know most hoteliers think of as the system of record. Yeah, you know, whether you agree with that or you don't, um, that's a uh, yeah, you know, that that's a logical place to to begin your journey to you know what I would call a current technology environment.
because of you know it's 2021 so so th there's just some some things that are just givens and um yeah number one of that is that you should be looking for above property or or, or cloud technology now whether it's public cloud private cloud i don't you know depending on the tool i don't think that really matters but the, the, the but the opportunity is to to lift your you know hardware and software environment out of your business environment um as a as a baseline first step um after that you, you're looking for and and this and this is not so much particular to 2021 but you're always looking for the current technology so the the type of platform you know that the software is using um the way that it's built and, and it, without wanting it to be too technical for a non-technical audience um that today's current approach is um open application programming interface standards and what does that mean for you well it well it means um that the system is a lot more uh, accessible by some of the other parties that will make up your overall your overall technology ecosystem um you're not you don't have to be a developer you just need to understand that that's the way that the system's been built there are nuances for that but um for the purposes of, of, of you know identifying tools they're two of the key pieces the third piece is more business oriented so you know stepping away from the specifics of the technology and looking more at the type of business that you want to run so um yeah as as, as people would notice everything's becoming more and more consolidated in in our lives for, through a technology environment personally and then also business needs to follow that so the other part that, that i always recommend is you want to do more with less um, so you want more technology more functional capability whichever way you, you choose to look at that from less technology solutions and the main reason that you want that is that it's not so much yeah there are technology benefits and environment benefits for that but most importantly it's a business benefit you know, it's about the type of environment that you want your hotel to operate as. It's about making a, an environment that's more connected for your staff. And the more connected your staff are, it translates to your ability to deliver a, a high standard of customer service as well um, through you know, automation and, and visibility of information, which you translate into product and service for the customer. So, you know, the, the two technology ones being cloud, of some description, open APIs of some description, but, but more importantly, um, you know, across business technology and consolidating your operational capability through your future tool selection. You know, I talk about starting with the end in mind because technology is not a short journey, it's a long journey. Um, it's a journey you never actually reach the end of. But What's most important is that you identify the type of business environment that you want to run in. And I think in 2021, this is a more pertinent question than it's ever been before because our technology capability is changing so much um, and so much more is now available to our industry, you know, that, that, that wasn't there as little as five or 10 years ago. So. So first and foremost, you've got to design the business that you would like to run and the environment that you would like to operate in. And after you've identified that, then you should go looking for the tools that can create that environment for you. Um, you know, I, I feel very strongly about envisaging, envisaging your end state and then looking for technology from that perspective versus taking the view of the technology that's sort of always been there and thinking that that's what you'll be getting because that's just not how things are anymore. And you've got to give yourself the best opportunity to, to not only make a, a, I guess, a technology platform shift, which really, you know, is, is, is sort of at the, at the base of most technology migrations today. What you're really trying to do is you're trying to create a more, um, a, a more cohesive business environment. And that's why you have to start from a business lens first. And that will help you identify the tools that make sense in your particular environment. So one of the most important things is, of course, the 
the business need itself and the type of the hotel. Is it a small, small family hotel? Is it a big chain? Uh, because these, uh, these definitely carry different, uh, different environment, different requirements. An important part that is sometimes missed is that, uh, when moving to the cloud, uh, you, in order to make that decision right, you also have to have a good feeling of your actual uh, IT spending. So if you're, especially if you're considering like uh, you have a current legacy system on premise and you're considering moving to the cloud, uh, do you know what your, your, what your spending is for that system? Because there, there are two different models. Uh, in one case, you buy the software locally, and then you have a local IT company or staff on on site that operate the system, which get salaries or or, or are paid as an external contractor. While in the cloud, you pass that cost to the to the cloud provider. So, in order to understand your even your your cost structure, you have to have a good tab of what your what you're spending for your on-prem system at this point. The other key part is identifying which parts of a typical hotel stack do you need and do you not need. Small hotels might not need like great room controls or or concierge services. So, uh, well, instead of the in the big hotel chains, you would you would definitely definitely need that. And uh, another key uh, key point to to watch out here is is your do you have a, an availability of IT resources nevertheless so in in case you're you're part of a, a large hotel chain you have you have already some IT staff that can that can help you and this helps offset the costs of, of a potential cloud solution uh, ideally uh, if you're a small enough property and you can you can move your entire operations in the cloud that is m most cost effective at, at this moment. So yeah, the, the key parts are like know your IT spending, know your business needs very well, which parts of the hotel stack you need and you would eventually need. Like uh, again, uh, a central reservation system, a CRM, guest services. Do you need all of this? Uh, and if yes, these should be factored into choosing into choosing the PMS. But yeah, the most important part: focus on the PMS. Choose the PMS right based on what other services you would need around it. You know, I think one of the one of the challenges that our industry has is this sort of throwback view that, that technology is often a one-time experience. It's not. It's a constant ongoing management discipline. And uh, as the platform that runs your business, it requires that level of management discipline. So so can you, you know, bring, bring new technology in with your old environment? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, you know, th there are caveats involved. But... I think in today's environment, the, 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 what this should really emphasize to, to someone who's about to take such a, such a path is impetus and you know, moving as swiftly as you can based on all of the, the factors that contribute to that, you know, change management, your financial disposition and, and what you can afford to do. But you should move swiftly or as swiftly as you can. Um, because technology doesn't stop it; it doesn't wait for you, and um, and it's your job to try to put yourself in a position where you're finding it easier to keep up. And some of those things that we've talked about here, in terms of the different types of technology that are deployed today, so your cloud-based technology, your open API technology, is going to move you to a state where keeping up is less demanding on you because the technology vendors are able to do so because of the way technology is built and deployed now. Um, so look, you, I, I don't think it's so much can, you have to, you know, you, you, you're going to have a combination of what we might call legacy technology or technology that is resident inside your business as you move to technology that's resident outside your business. But by the time you're finished, not, not too much of it will, will be physically um, present on property as we're used to seeing these things over the past you know, 30 odd years. Um, 
so yeah, that, that's, you know, yeah, yeah, yes, you can. And the vendor community understands the need to do that because if they can't get you there, then you won't get there. Um, so that's, that's largely taken care of, but it shouldn't be something that, that stops you feeling like you can make progress. So yeah, we are seeing a lot, a lot of movement from from existing legacy on-prem systems into the cloud, uh, and by by problems in the future, they are usually problems of uh, making a decision to go with a particular software vendor, um, uh, which down the road might not be compatible with another software vendor or or cause problems. So the two things that we've seen that work great in these cases are, first of all, have a North Star tech stack. So know what your stack, tech stack is supposed to be looking like five years down the road. Uh, this, this, it, it will never happen as you plan it. It would never happen as the North Star, but the North Star gives you framework for making a decision like Let's take a specific example. You, you, want, to, you want to introduce a revenue management system. Uh, and you care about would it integrate with your legacy on-prem PMS? Well, if you have a North Star that in five years you're probably using this and this cloud PMS, you might check, okay, do these guys, the revenue management system, work well with the, with the PMS system? Since in the world of, uh, of cloud and microservices, you're probably getting different services from different vendors. So having a good North Star uh, tech stack helps you make the decisions who will talk and, and play well with whom. Uh, and the other the other technique that we that we've seen actually save hotels and work miracles is is phasing in new technology. Uh, and by phasing in, I, I really mean physically phasing in. Like we've seen, let's say you want to switch from 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 your local PMS to a cloud PMS. But if you do it in one go and something breaks, like uh, room controls break, uh, it's it's a nightmare for a hotel. So so you can phase it like have if you have a five floor hotel, use the fifth floor to test the new PMS and keep the other four floors operating under the new PMS. It sounds like it's a, it's a big overhead to run two systems in parallel, but the danger of being offline for a month in the season is is even greater. So it's usually like run one season duo and um, and then then move to the to the new technology for the entire hotel, and this is the game is even easier for big chains since they can they can they can do that phasing not on a floor level but on a hotel level. So we are a chain of twenty hotels who will just pilot it in one. Uh, so having a good view of the future and always phasing in technology. Not 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 a big bank, but uh, like slowly, either floor by floor or hotel by hotel, will actually allow you to to improve your tech stack without suffering any downsides. To start, do a review of what technology your hotel currently has and determine how they impact your business for the better or even for the worse. You can consider the following criteria as a way of evaluating their relevance. Review the existing technology. Is it cost effective to your business and how does what you pay for it impact your cash flow? Does the product help you make and even save you money? Does it give an ROI perhaps in other ways? Does the product actually work towards and assist you in meeting the team's KPIs? Is it easy to learn for new staff? And how much does the team like to actually use the product? Again, a really important element. You must be satisfied with it, no exceptions. Why? Because the product's overall importance to your business is critical. Ask yourself, how would you do without it if it went down and then the support was lacking? Is it an essential tool for your business to operate? I think the main thing to remember is wherever possible, go with cloud-based solutions. They will give you the flexibility you need to scale as your business grows. Buy and use the technology that you only need at the current time. If you have established the base of your tech to be cloud-based, you can then easily 
scale up with integrations as you need to. And don't be afraid to ask questions and talk with consultants or vendors who might have the right solutions to support your business. There are many highly capable and flexible cloud-based solutions to choose from. Feel free to reach out to Mark and Constantine for their advice and feel free to check in with us if we can help with any introductions as well. Thanks for watching and as always, thanks for your support. Until next time, it's bye for now.